please welcome panel moderator, Vice President, GE Adsiv, Mohammed Edashami. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? On the stage, I have Kim Smith, Vice President and General Manager for Boeing Fabrication and the leader of additive for the entire Boeing Corporation. Shauna Gamble, the head of procurement for Bombardier. And Michael Suze, the board, chairman of board for Orlikon. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're going we're gonna to spend the next 20 minutes to talk about what is out there, what's possible, what are the challenges, and how we can collectively look at it in the aerospace and aviation, and how we can collaborate to overcome some of those challenges. Uh, let me start just uh, for each one of you, just give one minute of background where you started your journey and where you are in your position. Kim, would you? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me Thank here you. today. I'm really excited to participate. One minute. Well, so I, uh, at, uh, Mohammed shared my current responsibility. We're the largest internal supplier to Boeing commercial and additive responsibility for the company. I've been with Boeing about 20 years total. So I've spent most of my time in the exciting industry of aerospace. I've spent some time uh, in the automotive sector too. But engineering background, worked up and down the value chain, uh, which is very helpful for some of the opportunity and challenges we face in 3D printing. Great, we're glad you're here. Shana? Great, thank you. So I'm actually a newbie to the uh, aerospace industry. My background is actually high tech, high tech technology, so software hardware solutions for optical infrastructure. The software hardware solutions under the New York Stock Exchange, the 911 system, <clears throat> 23 of the 25 top banks. So Bombardier is very much focused now in bringing and elevating the software and electronics and next generation technology skills into the procurement and the operations organizations. And that's a big focus for me. So I'm very, very happy to be here. It's been a steep learning curve for six months, but I think I'm all in. Thanks. Good. Michael? So my business background was original automotive. With BMW, I started later in Porsche for engines. Then I had a company we sold. In MTU, I was chief operation officer and already cooperating five years with, with GE. Then I was fighting them as CEO of Siemens Energy. And now as a chair, as chairman of Verlicon, we start cooperation again. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Great. So can I start with you? So um, tell us about the vision of additive in Boeing and what can you achieve with additive today that you couldn't do with traditional manufacturing in component design and component procurement? Yeah, thanks. Well, so um, Jason set the stage really nicely about some of the history and, and uh, commented on where we're going to aerospace. So Boeing's been um, doing things in additive for quite some time now. We have uh, printed and delivered over 60,000 parts that are on an array of our products across our portfolio, everything from military aircraft to satellites to the International Space Station uh, to rotorcraft to, to commercial aircraft and beyond. So we're excited about uh, what we've learned over the years. We've established a vertical that I lead across the enterprise to really scale and accelerate application and value capture across our portfolio and better solutions for our customers. So, um, you know, the, the barriers of entry and some of the constraints that we've had within our production system, um, constraints on engineering design are now, are now uh, now being untapped. So we're really looking for things that do bring faster speed to market for our customers, help reduce unit cost, and help improve performance of our products. And we're seeing it in an array of areas from significant collapse in lead time for tooling to significant improvement in you know, buy to fly or material cost reduction, you know, down selection of parts to you know, stronger, lighter, better performing product. So we're excited about where we've been and we're ready to double down and really accelerate. Great. Shauna? So I would say that Bombardier probably isn't as far down the path as um, what my colleague is here at today, but there's no question there's a significant investment and I would say focus of attention when it comes to additives. We all battle the same problems about capacity and cost and weight 
our um, one other area of a significant focus though is how do you get time to market with a next generation technology design product that you can't do today and then the other end of the spectrum is how can we support our aftermarket we deal with obsolescence every single day we deal with uh, challenges of shipping products all over the world if you have an AOG your customer who spent 70 million dollars on their private jet once it fixed right now so you have to be able to deal with those immediately and how do we create an infrastructure that can use additive products for the point of customer awareness customer brand Michael so for Olicon being market leader in coding where we do additive since decades more or less but not to change geometry but to change the surface for us it was clear that we're looking for a new a new field to grow and additive is either you're in or you're out. So if you're not in today and if you're not step in, in 10 years it's probably difficult to get in. A lot of people are not aware about the radical changes additive is carrying with it and it's really comparable to introduction of internet or computing or whatever, whatever else. Because it's first time in life, since not first time in life, first time in 200 years probably, we get a new manufacturing technology only due to the fact that we can handle these big data now with the high power of computing. All the other stuff, machining, welding, forging, casting, it's all there since centuries. By that we will support existing industries, it's not only destructive, existing industries will still get additional productivity, but when we make the step in our mind, probably I'm too old already for that, but the younger generation of engineering, that they can leave all these design limits they learned in the university and think out of the box, not getting a design but getting a requirement and fulfill that requirement. And the design is following then the requirement because you can print them. Material become a um, part of design. It's not only one material you choose it with all its positive and negative effects. You have three, four, five different materials within one construction. So it's, so it's so radical, we cannot imagine, and I think for our generation, I'm 54 years old now, it's the obligation to open the door for the next generation, not to, not to forget something, to open it as wide as possible. And Erlikon as a mid-cap company, for us it's that, the bright future. Yep. Beautiful. So uh, look, uh, we also know that additive <laughs> is a disruptive technology. It's going to disrupt the logistics. It's going to disrupt the supply chain. Uh, a question, we start again back with you, uh, Kim. Uh, what do you think additive will do to your supply chain? And uh, sort of what are you going to do about it? Well, it's, it's really a great opportunity for us and our supplier partners. It's one of the things I think that makes working in additive so fun. The technology development within itself is super exciting and fun to be a part of, but you've really got to think about your business model and you know steps along the entire life cycle. So for our suppliers, I mean, collaboration is key, and um, you know we continue to look to have suppliers and partners that, that bring things forward as far as technology, that uh, are trusted partners as far as delivery and quality and all the things that, of course, we expect any consumer or customer expects. Um, so the disruption is exciting because, as we all appreciate, we're in a very competitive um, but long-term growth market, and so we need to cont continue to innovate and kind of bring value forward, and we expect that of our suppliers. So I, it's a great opportunity. Great. Shauna? Yeah, the, uh, each and every one of us as leaders in our roles have to look at what's our competitive advantage in the market. Um, and then where you look at your supply chain and do you elevate that competitive advantage and, and be a differentiator or not. Total cost of ownership is king, right? So every attribute of that is very important. I think what's really going to change though is that we're all battling over capacity. Each and every one of us have the same challenges with regards to how much of the attention of our tier ones who heavily invest in this industry and our tier twos, how much capacity are each and every one of us are getting. And we have to spend a lot of time and attention to make sure we get that capacity. So is this actually the introduction of a lot more tier two and tier three suppliers into the food chain because capacity requirements is driving that and that would be through additives. That's what I see coming. Right. Michael, you're coming at and looking at it from a supplier point of view, if you, if you will. What do you think this technology will do to the 
supply disruption and what are your suggestions? First and above all, I think suppliers will get closer to the OEMs. Mm -hmm. If you take Porsche, for example, one company I was running for the engine side, their own, in the, their own added value is 20% on a car, 80% is to buy. So to cooperate is the key, and the, and the key word in that industry, what we have today on hand, because the, the, the piece, what we have ahead of us, is too big to be handled for one. Yeah. There's so much challenges, and if we can team up, I, I like the picture, you have a big, big, big cake ahead of us. And it's bigger than everybody of us can eat up. So forget for a moment, and it's not antitrust, but forget for a moment competition. Because we create a market where we have more the challenge to supply all the desires and the wishes the customers will, 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 dis, will ask us when they have realized what's possible with additive manufacturing. Therefore, we will become by far closer, starting with the development. As I said, we will not start with the design and then manufacture something. You have to be core element with the, with the first thinking about what is the requirement of that piece. And there is another element from supply base, but as well from the OEM, I, I would like to mention. With that technology, we will reindustrialize our world. Because the cost of a, of a human being running a machine is almost irrelevant. It will be systems pretty complex, capital costs, which are in developed countries normally cheaper than, other, than anywhere else. And to, to, to run, maintain, operate, and develop such a system is by far more important. You need high-trained people, you need high-trained networks, which you don't find, you find them probably, but you find them first and above all in our societies. So all this question about where a society is moving to, are we becoming a service, a service society, which is never, is, can never carry the, 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 the value of a modern industrial society. This is we reinvent our, ourselves. So that's the next generation, and I really like this picture, that we have not the way everything is moving to China or to, to Southeast Asia or to Southeast Europe because of low cost. No, it's the opposite. Take the example of Adidas, where they moved the shoes back to Germany because it's a complete new design on shoes. It's not met, a metal uh, 3D printing, but it's a new way to th of thinking about. So it's, it's in all hemispheres. This technology will take its place as a benefit for our society. And that's the important part, to be on the edge of the wave and not serving somewhere down. I'm not a surfer, but I learned if you're down the wave, you're gone. <laughs> well said. Uh, what about challenges? So when we look at the aviation and aerospace itself, what about challenges in certification, in availability of materials, in availability of workforce. I'd uh, like to get your opinions. Uh, Shana, this time I start with you. From a resource and technology expertise, a lot of the investment and where we're, we're spending our time is at the universities. I mean, if you want your next generation leaders and those that are very comfortable and intimate with this, this new technology, uh, that's, where, that's where we're going. There's, there's no question that has to be our investment. Um, Challenges is the certainly certification. Uh, the aerospace industry is by far, I would think, one of the most regulated from all the industries that I've worked in. So time is against you almost in this factor. So if you can get something introduced, designed, repeatable, because quality is fundamental, it has to be a repeatable process, and if you can get it done inside two years on smaller attributes of the, of the cockpit or whatever that might be, that has to be your focus and in your investment. You, you can't go into to this thinking, okay, I'm gonna work on this and maybe I'll get 50 parts certified in five to seven years from now. You'll be so behind the curve. So the biggest challenge is what parts, who's, you know, where are you gonna get that, that uh, tenacity out of the next generation students to drive this and then, uh, Time. Time is your biggest challenge. And the speed is your friend. Yes. Speed right. is a friend. Time is the challenge. Yeah. Kim. Well, I would say uh, I'm really bullish on our ability to work through the challenges that are on us right now, and there are, there are many. Um, but, you know, we have a history of bringing technology forward in a rigorous way that the aerospace industry requires. So we do need 
consistent, reliable, repeatable processes that we can, we can verify and validate. So we're working our way through that. Certainly, uh, economic, the economic model. So technology usually leads, and when it really starts to scale is when we have breakthroughs on the economics. So prototyping and low-rate production is one thing, but when we have the volumes that we're producing at today, those buying their way onto our products in a way that is lower cost than traditional manufacturing is something that we're working through, which is why you know the supply chain collaboration, the next gen technology is super exciting. And then the, the talent management, it's really exciting. We have a holistic approach, so we're collaborating with universities here and around the globe and really trying to give engineers hands-on experience, learn by doing, get their hands dirty. I was talking to one of our earlier career engineers the other day and his only experience thus far is additive design. He's not done subtractive design, which cool. made my head hurt a little bit, yeah. but it was super exciting to see. So I'm very familiar with that. Yeah, I know you are. And so we, you know, it's we ecosystem and a holistic approach will help us get there. Yep. Michael, I would say the biggest challenge is to keep up the tension. As an energy guy has said there's only current flowing where the tension sits on. So what what what, what I mean with that is. Uh, we have to create an environment for additive like it was from 1923 when the spirit of St. Louis made its first jump over the Atlantic to the first step on the moon was only one and a half generation, 46 years. So probably we can do it half the time. So in 20 years from now, I would predict if we really industrialize that, if you don't give up, if you keep on spending money and you have to spend money up front, not ask what's the, what's the payback the first two years or three years or whatever, for sure they have to create then some positive cash flow. It's not a hobby. We are not an NGO. But in the end, to keep that tension, it's, a, it's not a marathon because we will have certain, certain wins in between. Right. So it's, it's more as the fat, if there's a the right word. Sorry if I'm not native English. Um, I'm unfortunately Bavarian, which is even more difficult than to talk English. <laughs> but anyway, to keep that tension, to keep that spirit, which drove mankind forward in that very, very productive years from the 20s to the 60s, 70s. And if you take all the inventions and, and the speed it happened. Yeah. By the way, only to mention that, not to overstress, it was unfair that the first man flying over the Atlantic could only be an American because the West Wind supported that significantly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Michael always adds a little bit of spice in, in the <laughs> island. I love it. Um, what can we do for you? What can G Additive do to accelerate the pace of adoption and go faster, not, not only in terms of the machine technology, but also in terms of the education? As you're all aware, a GE has, G Additive has committed $10 million to um, education towards middle school and high schools and also universities. Last year, we gave 400 machines out and eight um, uh, metal printing machines out. This year we'll do something similar and then for next four years. Are there things that we can do collectively that comes to your mind that we can push this thing forward? Any of you care to I'll take, take a few of those free machines, please. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few labs that would be very, very happy to have them for a while. Um, but, you know, the help actually has to a lot be driven from inside the company. We have to make sure that it is a focal point and top of attention and bring those partners in. Education is fundamental, right? Education is it, but it's the making sure that we all understand the path of least resistance. And if all the engineering teams and the procurement and supply chain teams understand clearly the path of least resistance to get this to market sooner, we will do it, right? Anything that's hard and difficult doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but it might not be the first things to happen. So educating us all the time um, on path of least resistance and the fastest way to market would be key. And seriously, I'll take a few of those machines. <laughs> Got it. Michael, Kim? I think there are two layers. The one layer is you did already a lot helping us setting up last year in October this Munich Technology Conference where we had first time more than 600 participants of our additive. So it fits perfectly that half a year later, we have a similar um, engagement here in New York, and we will have the next one in October again. And why it's Munich? Because it's the center of technology in Germany, and it's reachable across the world. So with GE having their headquarters there on, on additive, which was a very good choice, yeah. um, 
we can do a lot to keep that spirit and to push forward. And it's, I think, a certain obligation as well. And the other part is, for sure, give us a lot of parts to, de to design, to develop. And we buy a lot of equipment from your side. And so together, we will, sh we will sharpen that industry. So that's our expectation. Great. Kim? I really like the commentary about kind of the path of least resistance. I think that's key. I think clarity and focus is absolutely needed to be able to kind of work at speed through this. We're certainly very proud of our longstanding partnership with GE, and we've done a lot of really amazing things together over many, many decades. And so it's only natural that we continue to collaborate on this front. And really in aerospace in general, whether it's commercial or other parts of, of the aerospace sector, so many things have been done, pioneering things have been done due to collaboration. Um, so anyway, that's absolutely key. Great. We're honored to be partner with all three of you through this journey. And uh, hopefully next year this time, we see a lot more progress than we've seen over the last couple of years. Any, any final words you guys want to add? Do you want to start? I, I would only say keep track, because GE is extremely important. And a lot of companies have joined that, that journey. I don't think we have the waves we have seen a decade and two decades ago where it went up and down and was forgotten again and coming up. I think the train is, is, is sustainable left the station. So you're, you're in the locomotive business, you have to pull a lot. But there's huge companies, on the, on the, on the, especially on the, on the structure side, yeah. with Boeing and Bombardier and with, with other partners like us, coming from, more from a material background. My, my really desire is that we do not lose speed, that we're inspiring us, each other, that we understand that it's only doable if we partner, if we team up. That's my mantra. That, that big journey will only be taken by us if we, if we team up, if we carry each other when there's sometimes a little need. The competition comes later. The plate is too big to be eaten by one or even by all of us. So let's do that together. And then we will see every year success. But having in mind, it's a very young industry. I would not even say it's an industry. It was a hobby of some people. We are probably now on a level of Home Depot, and now we industrialize that. And this takes a while, and this takes effort. Yeah. But if you see what's on the end of that journey is, that's fantastic, so we have no other choice. And if we don't do it, others are doing it, and they leave us then behind. So stay at the edge of the wave together with us. That's my wish. Right. Just keep Ladies. knocking on our door. Don't, uh, don't take no for an answer. And that any door that seems to be open just a little bit, push harder, because this is fundamentally going to be the direction the industry is going for all, so many different reasons. So keep knocking on that door. Kim? It's a perfect fit. I mean, one of the most disruptive and transformational technologies of our time, certainly. And if you look at what our industry has done, the pioneering our industry has done, it's a, it's a perfect match. So we'll see what the future holds. Great. Thanks so much. I appreciate the Thank time. You. Thank you for listening Thank to you. us. Thank you. Take care.